Hello everyone, I am Hesam Nikpei and with Huanli we are going to talk about the stochastic load balancing problem with Poisson jobs. This is a joint work with our advisors Anindia De and Sanjeev Khanna. We start by defining the problem. Suppose we have n jobs and each job has a running time or as we call it size. We want to assign these n jobs to m machines and after the assignment, each machine runs its assigned jobs one by one with no pause between them. The goal is minimizing the make span, where make span is the time that all jobs are done. We know that this problem is MP hard even when the number of machines is two. But the good news is the problem admits a p-test. Meaning for a constant error epsilon, there is an algorithm running in polynomial time in N that returns an assignment, which is no worse than one plus epsilon of the optimal answer. And from now on in this talk, epsilon is our target error. Later work has improved it to an efficient p-test, means the running time remains polynomial even for some little O1 epsilon. Many different versions of this problem have been studied. For instance, one might be interested in the case when machines have different speeds. One another instance is on related machines case where the size of a job depends on the machine that it is assigned to. There is another version where there are precedence constraints. In this case, there might be jobs that can be executed only if some other jobs are already done. But there is one thing common amongst all of the mentioned cases, that is, the job sizes are known. When the job sizes are exactly known, we refer to it as deterministic load balancing problem. But this is not the only case that one can imagine, and there might be uncertainty in the job sizes. In the stochastic version of the load balancing problem, the job sizes are random variables instead of fixed real values, and now their distributions are known. Note that two random variables may have different distributions. Now the make span itself would be a random variable, so the goal would be minimizing the expected make span. We now define the stochastic load balancing problem formally. Throughout this talk, we use bold symbols indicating as random variables. As input, we have n random variables, which we show them as wi's. We want to partition them into m sets sj's, such that the expected maximum over the sum of jobs in sj's is minimized. But what do we know about the stochastic case? Kleinberg, Rabboni, and Tardosh first show that there is a constant factor approximation when the random variables are arbitrary. This is a very general result, and after that, there have been improvements when the random variables come from a specific family of distribution. As an example, Gol and Indic found a p-test when random variables follow from exponential distribution. They also show that when random variables are Poissons, there is a two approximation algorithm. Our main question is, can we achieve a p-test? Let's have a quick recap of Poisson random variables. There is a well-known fact that states the sum of two Poisson random variables with means lambda one and lambda two is a Poisson random variable with mean lambda one plus lambda two. A direct corollary is that the sum of jobs in a single machine is a Poisson random variable with mean equals to the sum of the assigned jobs means. Note that this is a bit similar to the deterministic case, like if we had three jobs with size one, two, and three in the deterministic case and assign them to a single machine, then the load of the machine would be six. Now for the Poisson jobs, the sum of three jobs, which means one, two, and three is a Poisson 
random variable with mean six. This naturally suggests an idea. We can pre pretend that the mean of the jobs are their size and run a deterministic p-test for them. Unfortunately, there are examples that running a deterministic p-test can result in assignment which is constant for factor far from the op optimal. We now describe one of such examples. Suppose there are m plus one jobs and m machines. Each job is a Poisson random variable with mean a small constant of log m. Let's say log m over a thousand. Now consider two assignments. One, when one machine has two jobs and the rest have one job. The other is when half of the machines have two jobs. Both of these assignments are optimal for the deterministic case. But even for large M, there is a constant factor gap between the expected maximum of, maximum of these two assignments. And the deterministic algorithm can return any of them. So a deterministic p-test might return a bad assignment for the Poisson case. Note that the fact that the means are a small constant of log M is pretty crucial. As Juan will explain later, if the constant is big enough, say something like 1000 over epsilon square, then both of these assignments would be optimal and concentrated around the maximum load. Now that we know deterministic p-tests won't work for every case, can we adapt other techniques to achieve a p-test? There is another idea which contains discretization and dynamic programming which works like this. First, discretize the mean of job sizes such that they don't get too far from the real value. Let's say not more than one plus delta far, where delta is a constant dependent on the target error epsilon. This procedure limits the number of different means of the job. We also discretize the solution space. Now that the job sizes and also the solution space is limited, we use a dynamic programming to solve the problem. And we won't discuss about the details of the dynamic programming in this talk. The explained idea works well for the exponential jobs and implies a p-test. But why does it work for exponential distribution and how can we use the same reasoning to reach a p-test for the Poisson case? When we scale the mean of an exponential random variable by one plus delta, the random variable itself does not increase by more than a one plus delta factor. As a result, by scaling the means, the expected maximum won't increase by more than a factor one plus delta. Let's call this property scalability. The problem is the scalability is not obvious for Poisson case. Formally, one needs to show the star equation. This equation states after scaling the means by one plus delta, the expected make span won't increase by more than a one plus delta factor. This equation is the heart of the p-test, so let's take a look at it for a few seconds. Okay, to achieve a p-test, we showed that the scaling argument, um, I mean, the star equation is true for large enough m. For a small m, we show a weaker version of the scaling argument and using these two, to, these two together, a p-test dynamic, using dynamic programming is achievable. To improve it to an e-p-test, we proved that the maximum of maximum of some Poisson random variables are concentrated under some conditions. Then we can solve the problem by designing an integer linear programming with constant number of variables. This is the same technique used to provide an EP task for the deterministic case. Now my quarter only will present the rest of our work. Hello, I'm Huan Li, and I'll be talking to you about the rest part of the paper. So as my co-author Hassan has pointed out, the main result of this paper is an efficient p-test for load balancing Poisson jobs. 
And Hassam also pointed out that in the paper, we have proved a scaling argument star for large M. But in fact, for small m, we also proved a weaker version of the argument, which when combined with star would already give us a petas for this problem. However, we won't cover the proof of these arguments, but instead we'll focus on how to obtain an efficient petas given these arguments. So here is the proof outline. To prove our main theorem, we will first make an observation on Poisson jobs that will enable us to restrict our attention to small jobs only, or by small jobs, we mean their means are small. Then we will recap a rounding and an integer linear programming scheme for handling deterministic small jobs used in previous works, which will be useful to us as well. Finally, we present our efficient PTAS for load balancing small Poisson jobs and analyze its performance. The key idea behind our scheme is to do case analysis on the input instance and give various reductions to deterministic load balancing with different objective functions. And we argue the correctness of our reductions by showing concentration results of the make spec. Now we make a first observation. From now on, we will use lambda i to denote the i's job size and we use mu j to denote the j's machine's load because the load is a Poisson distribution, so it's uniquely determined by its mean, mu j. And we use mu to define the average load, which is the sum of the job sizes over the number of machines. It is a quantity that is independent of any specific assignment. Then we notice that the expected make span which is the expected max of independent Poisson random variables, is a convex function with respect to the loads, mu j's, or the means of the random variables. So we would want the mu j's to be as uniform as possible in order to minimize the objective function of us. As a result, for any job whose size is larger than the average load, it must be solely assigned to a single machine in any optimum assignment. Therefore, from now on, we assume we have already assigned all the large jobs and are only left with jobs whose size is less than the average load. Then, by this assumption, and again by the convexity of the objective function, we can also show that all the machine loads are between mu over 2 and 2 mu in the optimum assignment. Namely, all the machine loads must be within a constant factor of the average load in the optimum assignment. Now, an implication of the last point above and our scaling argument is that for M sufficiently large, even if we overflow each load by an additive factor of epsilon mu, the expected make span will only scale by one plus order epsilon multiplicatively. Now we give a recap on the rounding scheme for handling deterministic small jobs. Specifically, suppose we are under the regime that all job sizes are less than the average load. Then there is a linear time rounding scheme such that first, it outputs at most n rounded jobs. That is, it does not increase the total number of jobs after rounding. Second, after rounding, the number of different job sizes is only a constant, which could, which could depend on the error epsilon. And finally, we can recover between assignments of the original jobs and the rounded jobs in linear time while changing any machine's load by at most epsilon mu additively. We continue to give a recap on an integer linear programming scheme for handling deterministic small jobs. In particular, suppose we are given a set of n jobs returned by the previous rounding scheme. So these jobs will satisfy the properties in the previous slide. And we are also given a function f mapping real values to real values. And our goal is to find an assignment of the given jobs such that first, in this assignment, all machine loads are at most twice of mu. And second, 
the objective function, which is the sum of the function f of the loads, is minimized. Now, this lemma says that we can reduce this problem to an integer linear programming with only a constant number of variables. And moreover, we can find the optimal assignment by solving this integer linear programming in linear timing then. We are now ready to give our efficient PTAS for handling small Poisson jobs. First, if we are under the regime that M is only a constant, we just do dynamic programming. And DP is efficient in this case because we are really exploiting the fact that M is small. Then, if we are under the regime that M is omega of one and mu is omega of log M. So mu is much larger than the logarithm of the number of machines. In this case, we just run the efficient pitas for load balancing deterministic jobs on the lambda i's, which means we will replace each Poisson job with mean lambda i with the deterministic job of size lambda i. And the correctness of this case follows from turn of bound. And for the remaining case where m is omega of one and mu is order of log m, we do the following. First, we apply the rounding scheme to the job sizes. Then we reduce the problem to finding an assignment, minimizing the sum of some function f of the loads. At which point we run the ILP scheme to solve it efficiently. And the correctness of this case will follow from the concentration results of the make span, which we will show in a few slides. Summarizing the previous slide, for m constant or mu omega of log m, we already have an efficient PTAS by either dynamic programming or deterministic load balancing. For the remaining case where m is omega of one, and mu is order of log m, we need to first give reductions to minimizing a sum of some function f of the loads, and then argue the correctness of those reductions. Finally, to show the latter case, we will further divide it into two regimes where mu is less than m to the minus epsilon or mu is larger than m to the minus epsilon, namely, our split point is chosen to be an inverse polynomial in M. First, we consider the reduction for the first regime. In this case, our reduction is motivated by the following lemma on the concentration of the make span. Namely, this lemma says that in this regime, there exists an integer alpha such that the make span is between alpha minus one and alpha with high probability. Moreover, this integer alpha only depends on the average load mu, which is independent of any specific assignment. Therefore, we can just pre-compute this alpha and then reduce the problem of minimizing the make span to finding an assignment that maximizes the probability of the make span being smaller than alpha or equivalently to maximize the product of the probabilities of each load being smaller than alpha. Then just taking logarithm, this problem further reduces to maximizing a sum of uh, some function f of the loads, which can be solved by the ILP scheme efficiently. Then we consider the second case. In this case, our reduction is motivated by the following lemma of the concentration of the make span. In particular, this lemma says that um, in this case, we have that the expected make span is within one plus minus order epsilon of some integer beta. And this integer beta, roughly speaking, is defined to be the largest integer for which there is a constant probability of the make span exceeding it. In the precise definition, we use a sum of tail probabilities as a proxy of that probability. And we fix the constant to be one third. Now, given this lemma, our problem of minimizing the make span reduces to finding the smallest such integer beta, because that would give us a one plus order epsilon of the smallest make span. 
And due to the monotonicity of such integer betas, we can find it by a binary search. In particular, um, during our binary search to check if there is a beta which is less than some threshold theta, we just need to find an assignment to minimize the sum of the tail probabilities of the load for theta. And then we just need to check if this sum of probabilities is less than one third or not. If it is, there must be a beta which is less than the threshold theta. Otherwise, there isn't. And this problem of minimizing the sum of tail probabilities again can be reduced to an integer linear programming and it can be solved efficiently. And our binary search will only incur a logarithm factor in the running time. So this finishes our efficient PTAS for handling small Poisson drops. Now to conclude, in this talk, we have investigated the load balancing problem with Poisson jobs, for which only a two approximation scheme had been known by Goyle and Indic in 1999. Then by using a scaling argument, we were able to obtain a PTAS by doing dynamic programming. However, we didn't cover the proof for this argument in this talk. Then we further gave an efficient PTAS for this problem by doing case analysis on the input instance and giving reductions to deterministic load balancing with different objective functions. To argue the correctness of our reductions, we proved and exploited the concentration of the max span, or equivalently the concentration of the max of independent Poisson random variables. For future directions, a natural question to ask is that can our technique be helpful in other optimization problems with Poisson random variables? And also, we don't yet know if there is a PTAS for load balancing Bernoulli job, so it could also be an interesting future project. Thank you.